Welcome to the Scott Townsend Show, brought to you by Dietzo Man Productions. Got down on his knees and just bowed his head and was silent for two to three minutes. <laughs> it was just long enough for me to almost like exit out of the video because I was thinking in my head, this dude is weird. I don't like this. Um, but then he went on to explain, you know, and you read in the first chapter of that book, um, I think it's the first or second chapter. I'm getting my weeks mixed up, but it's just like, people just come in and talk to God like he is just, you Yeah, know, that's the first chapter. Your buddy. Yeah. yeah, he's your buddy. And uh, he's like, he's not your buddy. He's your God. Hey, this is Scott Townsend. Welcome back to the Scott Townsend Show. And today I have with me Matt Clark. Matt, how's it going? Um, it's going good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. So <clears throat> the reason why I have Matt on uh, is Matt leads a small group of men uh, once a week. And uh, we talk about a lot of stuff, a lot of different things. And uh, it's not, uh, it's a Christian group, of course, but it's not churchy. And uh, thank you. There, there's so many things that we talk about. Yeah, you, you bet. There's so many things that we talk about that I, I think you as the audience, those of you listening, um, life is made up of more than, you know, this show is all based on how to not necessarily life hack, but how to have a better life, how to work better, at, you know, be better at work, be better at home, um, how to have better meetings, how to be more productive, just encouraging and inspiring. That's why we've had all these guests in the past. And uh, Matt's been on the show before along about a year ago, I guess. And, uh, but we don't talk a lot about uh, the spiritual side of things. And that's been on purpose, I guess, for a while, but because we talk about so many interesting things and you really can't separate the natural from the supernatural. I mean, it's, you know, when you show up to work and you're in the oil field or you're in advertising and you walk through the front doors, it's all you, whether, whether, whether you're spiritual or not, I don't even know if that's the right word. Um, People around you, your family, your friends, your coworkers, all benefit from whether or not you have a a, uh, a good relationship with God, whether you believe in God or not. Um, I don't even know if that makes sense. So I'm going to ask Matt yeah, to sense. help me out sense. here. But uh, so I invited Matt. I said, hey, Matt, why don't we get together after the uh, men's group and discuss some of the points that were brought up and you know, there's probably 18 people in our group. I don't know, 16, 18, something like that. Um, I just did the the numbers. And if everybody showed up, it would be 33 people. It's not a small group anymore. <laughs> it's amazing. So I, uh, yeah, so when we talk about these things, I, I, I told Matt, it'd be nice to uh, dial in the listeners, those who watch the Scott Townsend show. Um, we talk about everything else. Might as well talk about, might as well talk about this because it's, it's important whether you believe in it or not, that's fine. But uh, just Matt, welcome to the show. And uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I might title this, Everybody Wants to Go to Heaven, But Nobody Wants to Die to Get There, <clears throat> based on the chapter that we read. But uh, first off, before we get any deeper, why don't you describe the men's group? Uh, would you, would it be okay if I just kind of gave you a history of it first? Sure, whatever, sure. It's, this, this is all you, man. So Pastor Scott wanted everybody on the church staff to start a group, and 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 I told him this the other day, I wasn't very excited about it because it's just another thing to do. Um, you know, for, you know, I have two teenagers that play sports, so I'm constantly doing that or, you know, there's just not a lot of time in everybody's day. So another thing wasn't what I wanted. And so for two years, I didn't really put any effort into the group of trying to get people to come. So for 
probably a year and a half, two years, it's just me and two people. And one day I just, I don't know. I mean, I, you can say it's the Holy Spirit. You can just say, I just kind of got maybe tired of looking at the same two people. I don't know, but I just got excited about inviting people to it. And I said, well, what if we just started a group uh, for Christians and even for non-Christians to just ask the questions that they are like thinking about, you know, kind of church away from church, but in a way that you can talk about it in normal terms with regular, normal, everyday talk, you know, among guys. Yeah. Just talk the way you talk. If you, if you cuss, cuss, if you don't, don't, uh, if you're professional, great. If you're not great, I wanted everybody to come, whoever wanted to be there. So I specifically went after, you know, people that I knew first, you know, uh, people that, uh, I'm comfortable just being myself around. And that kind of just grew into them inviting people that they were comfortable around. Um, like you, for instance, like, I feel like I can, I can talk to you about anything and there's not going to be any like, well, that's a weird thought. You know, I think we all need people who we can share our crazy ideas with, and they're not just going to roll their eyes and say, Hey, this that's dumb. That's never going to happen. Right. We need, we need people who uh, are going to challenge us. We need people who are going to say like, man, maybe you should pursue that thought or things like that. And that's just kind of where the group came from. And you know, the Bible is one of those things that's just, it's, it's a crazy, crazy, like a lot of people think like, man, and I, I see this movement happening. It's just like, well, the Bible is just for teaching. None of those things really happen. I choose to believe that those things really happened. You know, I had a guy ask me one time, do you really believe that, you know, Jonah, for those of you who know that story was swallowed by a whale? Um, I said, yeah wholeheartedly he's like why I was like what kind of Christian would I be if I didn't believe that you know um so yeah I mean the Bible is a crazy thing to talk about but if we could talk about it in a relatable organic real talk way that's what I wanted and just by the group's attendance growing it was kind of evident that other people wanted that same thing so Again, it's just kind of grown and it's grown organically. I don't, we don't have to promo it. It's just pe people come and we talk. And like, for instance, when one of our guys came in and I mean, I had a, you know, a verse we were going to discuss that morning and he just came in and I'm just going to say it the way it needs to be said. He's like, my wife is really pissing me off this morning. <laughs> I immediately, I immediately looked up and said, that's what we're going to talk about because it benefits everybody at the table most of us are married some of us are not because we have what's really cool about the group too is there are there's a guy who's i believe he's in his 70s am i correct the guy you sit next to i don't i don't know i don't want to dis i don't want to yeah. i don't i don't want to be rude but he's we older have, than i am i'll have i'll say that he's older than you yeah but we have that older we have older people demographic there. Yeah. we have juniors from high school and then what's really cool when you look around the table, there's all different types of ethnicities. I mean, we have a guy from yeah. Africa. Um, and it's really, truly, like, if you look at the, you know, what the church is supposed to be, it's sitting around that table. No, I agree. And I, I also think that uh, it's cool that some of the guys can also help with their experience. So, you yeah. know, they they may have overcome the problem and said, here's how we, here's how my wife and I dealt with it. Yeah. And so when you go 100%. around the table, you have all these guys that are able to, who have lived life <clears throat> and can say, you know, you might consider this, you might consider that. So it's uh, the ironing, sharpening iron, you know, it's, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing too is I, I, I like that. Uh, I like that there's guys there that can relate to guy concerns. You know, women <laughs> like to get together and they, they do their thing. That's cool. You know, and, and there's, there's groups where couples get together and blah, blah, blah. But this is kind of more of a men's, well, it is a men's group and uh, you show up and there's guys around you that have either faced what you're facing or, or about to, yeah. um, <clears throat> and can help you, you know, talk it through, or maybe you can help someone. So we call it the M5, Matt's Monday morning men's meeting, or I, I call it that. I don't know. So uh, so we're doing this book. Um, 
Yeah. And uh, we, uh, when we started doing this book, uh, I've been wanting to have you on for a while to talk about this kind of stuff. And it seemed like now's as good a time as any. Um, why did you choose, here it is, Crazy Love by Francis Chan, Overwhelmed by a Relentless God, Crazy Love. Why did you pick this book? Why did I choose the book? Um, honestly, I don't, I don't remember why I read it. I, I remember watching a video on YouTube and he was one of the speakers, you know, cause I was trying to get some, you know, thoughts on a message I was sharing and he, he was weird. I'm just <laughs> like, he started his message off by saying, would you guys mind if I just took a second and prayed? And so that's pretty normal. You know, you expect a quick prayer and then he jumped into his message. But he got down on his knees and just bowed his head and was silent for two to three minutes. <laughs> it was just long enough for me to almost like exit out of the video because I was thinking in my head, this dude is weird. I don't like this. Um, but then he went on to explain you know, and you read in the first chapter of that book, um, I think it's the first or second chapter, I'm getting my weeks mixed up, but it's just like, people just come in and talk to God like he is just, you yeah, know, that's the first chapter. Buddy. Yeah. yeah, he's your buddy. And uh, he's like, he's not your buddy. He's your God. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the first chapter was uh, stop praying, which is kind of a, a funny thing to think about. But when you get to reading it, it makes all the sense in the world, like you said. But the second thing, though, in the second chapter was uh, you might not, you finish, might not this finish this chapter. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, which is why I wanted to call this episode. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die to get there. Church is not, or your walk with God is not what you know. Church people call fire insurance, which is uh, what I used to treat it as. Yeah, it's just like, I got to do whatever I got to do just to stay out of hell. Um, and I think, I don't think we've done a good job of explaining, like, when you follow God and you do the way, like, whatever, I can't say, like, the way that works for you. You know what I'm saying? There's, there's definitely a way to follow God. You got to know his word or you're not going to benefit from any of it because of lack of knowledge. If you don't know that God can heal you, then, you know. There you go. There's a great example. Uh, if you don't know that God wants the best for you, then you're going to constantly think that God's mad at you. Um, but we got to stop thinking about, you know, your relationship with God. It's just like, I don't want to go to hell. And we need to start focusing more on, I want everything God has for me so I can live the best life I can now. You know, I don't want to wait to get to heaven to be, you know, everything God called me to be. And I want to be everything he wants me to be now. And I, I want to walk in that. And, and again, like I say in our group all the time, not in a weird religious way. When you are at home, you're a minister and that's your church. When you, when you go to your job, you know, it, it could be a good church or a bad church too. I mean, you could just complain and whine and moan and, you know, People are going, always relate church to that because it's just like, well, I know he goes to church all the time. I know he's heavily involved there, but all that dude does is complain. He doesn't even do a good job at work. Minister through your work, minister through your relationships and how you treat people. Thank you for joining the Scott Townsend Show. We'll be back right after this. Hey, this is Scott, and we have a new way of allowing listeners to sponsor, to help with the production of this podcast. We're going to start using buymeacoffee.com. If you go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend, you can make a donation. It takes a lot of work to put these podcasts together, so um, if you want to help us out, keep this going, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash Scott Townsend. And now back to the program. Like you're a minister and 
uh, you know, the, yeah. And, and God and, has and so much more for you right now. He, you know, I have two kids, you have a son. Um, I want them to live a good life now and not just constantly be telling them or them to think like, well, life gets better when I get older, you know? And as we both know, it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't get better. You just have more life experience, but God wants you to live awesome now. He wants you to live a good life now. I mean, why are we waiting? Why are we waiting till we get to heaven? We can do miraculous things now. We can, I hate even saying this when I'm talking about the Bible, we can be financially blessed now, not necessarily monetarily, but, but monetarily, every, but monetary, that's just, but here's the thing. That's not the major focus. That's just no. a byproduct of me following God. Right. If I do what his word says, and like, let's just take Matthew 6, 33, which is a very common scripture. If I seek God first, the promise to that is that he's going to give me everything I need. So it's just like, okay, what should I do for a career? Um, instead of me just, you know, uh, there is a part we have to play. We need to go apply. We need to think about it. Like, what do I love to do? Um, uh, you know, what am I passionate about and how do I find a job that lines up with that? And does it always work out that way? No. Sometimes you just got to work mundane jobs, which we've all done, uh, to get to where we want to be. But, but if I seek him first and he's guiding my every decision, which is a weird concept to people because there's a sense of control to that, which there's really, it's not control. It's I want the best for my life and I want the best to lead me. You know, um, most people are just myself included are stubborn and we want to figure things out on our own. But the Bible is just like, you don't have to figure everything out on your own. I'll help you. You know, I'll guide you in the right direction. And the Bible says, like, he'll open doors that no, no man can open. And I, I think I said this in group one time, which I, I believe with all my heart. It's just like, if we go to our jobs and we're so constantly focused on got to please the boss, got to please the boss. When he comes around, we got to look like we're working. We got to do this. We got to do that. Okay. Maybe we get promoted. Okay. Maybe we get the next job, uh, the, the next rung above us. We make a little bit more money, but uh, here's what I truly believe. And the Bible says, do everything is unto the Lord, right? So if I apply that to my job, to my marriage, to my kids, I'm going to, I'm going to give them everything as if I'm doing it for God himself. I'm going to work and be very diligent in what I do. God will be the one that promotes you. And if God promotes you, um, guess what? No man can take you from that position. But if man is the one promoting you and that's all your focus is to please man, man can take you right off of that platform. But if God puts you there, guess what? Nobody can touch you. So this Depression. chapter, this chapter is a lot about dying, a lot of about, uh, you know, you might not, you know, he talked about the guy that the eulogy, the giving a eulogy and then died after the eulogy. Yeah. <clears throat> You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Today could be your last day. A lot of us don't live it like that. And so we think, well, you know what, when I'm 80, mm -hmm. then we'll have a serious conversation. <laughs> and then, you know, um, let me get some things out of the way that I want to do first. Then we'll talk, we'll get serious. But his point, Francis' point was in this chapter is uh, you might, you might not get that. You might, it might be today. You just don't know. So Keep do I get busy living or do I get busy dying? Get busy living. Why wait? Like, why wait? It doesn't mean you have to be weird. It doesn't mean you have to like, you know, we started this group so we could be real with each other. Correct. Would you agree with that? Right. And it's like, you will not fit in if you come in there just to prove that, you know, you know, a bunch of scriptures. Okay. <laughs> you just won't be comfortable. But if you come in there with a, an open heart to, you know, discuss like, man, I'm really struggling in this area or I've struggled in this area, then, you know, people are more likely to listen to you. And uh, most people around that table have done a lot of living. They can help other people and that's community. And that's really what I think the church is, is community. It's, it's people helping other people. Um, one of the coolest things that happened uh, in our group and this is kind of to answer your question about, we're just going to live. We're going to do things. We're not just going to sit and talk about it and not move forward. Um, I think one of our guys brought to our attention uh, some parents that weren't going to be able to give their kids Christmas presents. 
And right there, it wasn't planned. It was just everybody started throwing cash out on the table. And he was able to go take that money and buy Christmas for the family. I mean, that's living to me. Being able to take whatever influence you have and use it to help other people. I mean, that's loving others. Right. Okay? And I, I get a better understand. Here's something that's really I've been thinking about. If you love God, it will be easy to love other people, even the ones you don't agree with. There's too much division. I mean, we all hear that. I'm not going to go down that road. Um, <clears throat> but when I have the heart of God, my heart for others opens up, even the people I don't agree with or don't like or don't necessarily talk to. And guess what happens when you love other people? They're more likely to listen to what it is you're saying especially when you have a relationship built with them. That's why anybody could come off the street and sit in our group on Monday mornings and fit in, whether they were another religion, go to a different church, or you know, had just gotten drunk or high the night before, they could come in and sit in our group and hopefully feel comfortable because there's no, there's no weirdness like that. We just, they come in, we love on them and hopefully they stick around so they can learn more about, you know, God's love for them. And uh, to me, that's living. You know, and if, if I want to be selfish, if all the guys in that group want to be selfish, we could all stay home and sleep, you know, but these guys are choosing to show up and it's just really cool to see how God's working in that and it's having an effect, you know, and I even think about it to this degree, Scott, and then this, we're blessing outposts by going there. I yeah. should have said a coffee shop we go to, but whatever. I'll give them a plug. <laughs> yeah. 20 guys buying coffee is a nice little boost in the morning. I really think, um, I don't know, you can't, the other thing is to like, you can get busy living or get busy dying like your question says. I think you get busy dying when you disconnect from community. You know, you, you kind of elevate your importance over the importance of what like God's plan is and his plan is community his plan is for people to be together to encourage each other to sharpen each other to challenge each other and I think that's what it's all about is just we need more realness we need more authenticity we need more um, we need people to be able to come in and just kind of bear it all and not be judged for it and move forward and and be encouraged I think a big, huge win for any group that meets, you know, to discuss the, the things we discuss is when somebody from the outside who doesn't think they would fit into it feels right at home, right? Or comfortable in that situation. And that's a powerful thing. No, that, that's good. Yeah. So, you know, those of you listening out there and stuff, I think of the, you know, from the uh, industry I came from, oil and gas, there's uh, a lot of guys out there on drilling rigs, driving trucks, you know, they're tough and, uh, and, uh, they, they do a great job. They keep America rolling. And, but at the same time, uh, you might be, you know, sometimes you feel like you gotta be too tough to talk about stuff like this. So it's, it's, uh, if you want to be tough, try to talk about stuff like this, then yeah, that's, that's when it like, really gets tough. Let's see how tough you are. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and most one of the dumbest things I've heard people say, and this drives me crazy, uh, is when I hear a guy, uh, it's usually, you know, they've had tough lives. You know, me and God have an understanding that uh, he leaves me alone, I leave him alone. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. You're, you're not on God's level. You know what I'm saying? And I think mm -hmm. some people honestly need to hear that. Like, you're not on God's level, you know? And it's not that, it's not that he doesn't love you, just your your ignorance of who he is is just astounding and you truly don't know god when you make a statement like that mm -hmm. and so that's the kind of thing that we talk about monday mornings and it's hopefully it's just one of those hopefully it just continues to grow and it's just been fun to do. It's just been fun to get to know the guys and to hear them share their hearts and it's fun to see new guys come in and just kind of get it you know I mean, I, the can the I say something? Sure. I hate that phrase. Can I say something? No. What phrase? Share your heart. If you're I'm gonna, if you're it. going, if you're trying to get a. 
Tell us what you're I'm, thinking How about that. There you go. There you go. Now, here's something cool. I've never happened. been. I've never had a corporate meeting where they said, "Hey, uh, um, the vice president of finance, would you share your heart with us about the financial, the financials?" It's never Challenge happened. Accepted. I'm going to work into that role so I can do that, and then I'm just going to quit right after I say it. No, let me let me say one more thing. I know you're probably about to wrap it up, but I'm about to wrap it up. Well, any last things you'd like to say, Matt? No, I'm hang up here. I'm not sure you're about to wrap it up. I did want to share one more thing. Okay, we are about to wrap it up. Cool. You were reading my the, mind. The kid who is a junior at high, the high schooler. His mom saw me at a baseball game last night, and she said, "I just want you to know, he really loves the group." She's like, he usually sleeps till 10 uh, every day. But just the fact that he gets up on a Monday morning and comes to your 7 a.m. group, it just means so much to me. And so thank you. And she said he even invited his dad. And so wow. high schoolers are a tough group to reach. Yeah. They've, got, they've got a ton of options and sleep being high at the top of that list. Yeah. For this kid to sacrifice his sleep, and even my son comes um, because he just likes it. You know, mm -hmm. he can hear me talk all day, but he loves to hear all these other guys talk. Um, I think that's a win. That's when, you know, because the dad doesn't go to church uh, and Eric comes to youth. But um, I don't know when you when you're so comfortable that you can invite somebody that you're not sure about coming to something like this. I think that's a win. Yeah. You know, and just we're going to. I think the thing is we got to continue to be real and authentic with these guys when they come in. And if we ever get away from that, I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you want to come back next week? I would love to. All right. Well, do it. And you know, yeah, if, uh, I'll put uh, Matt's contact information in the show notes below, or you can email me if you want. And I'll pass along the information. Scott at Scott And uh, yeah. So Hope everybody out there has a great day, Matt. Thanks for um, joining us and kind of dialing us in to uh, some things we need to hear. Yeah, it was a pleasure. So for Matt Clark, this is Scott Townsend. Thanks for watching, listening to the Scott Townsend Show. Have a great day and we'll talk to you later. Scott Townsend Show is a Dietzo Man production. For more episodes, visit the Scott Townsend Show YouTube channel, listen on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Scott.